So if you recall back even as early as chapter 3, Israel, this motley group of slaves, was being described as an army with kind of military language. So there, there's a little bit of a foreshadow in our mind. We're supposed to be thinking, is there going to be an actual battle? Are they going to actually have to fight the Egyptians at some point? Well, today we see what that fight is going to entail. Uh, and it's probably not what any of them would have expected. Exodus 14, 5 through 18. When Egypt's king was told that the people had run away, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about the people. They said, what have we done letting Israel go free from their slavery to us? So he sent for his chariot and took his army with him. He took 600 elite chariots and all of Egypt's other chariots with captains on all of them. The Lord made Pharaoh, Egypt's king, stubborn, and he chased the Israelites who were leaving confidently. The Egyptians, including all of Pharaoh's horse-drawn drawn chariots, his cavalry and his army, chased them and caught up with them as they were camped by the sea. By Pi Hahirath, in front of Baal Zephon, as Pharaoh drew closer, the Israelites looked back and saw the Egyptians marching toward them. The Israelites were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, weren't there enough graves in Egypt that you took us away to die in the desert? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt like this? Didn't we tell you the same thing in Egypt? Leave us alone. Let us work for the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to work for the Egyptians than to die in the desert. But Moses said to the people, don't be afraid. Stand your ground and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never, ever, you will never ever see again. The Lord will fight for you. You just keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to get moving. As for you, lift your shepherd's rod, stretch out your hand over the sea and split it in two so that the Israelites can go, out, go into the sea on dry ground. But me, I'll make the Egyptians stubborn so that they will go in after them and I'll gain honor at the expense of Pharaoh and his army, his chariots and his cavalry. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain honor at the expense of Pharaoh, his chariots and his cavalry. Um, <clears throat> so this is the, the final post the ten plagues, the final defeat of Pharaoh. First thing that jumps out to me was all this war imagery. Right? There's a repetition of Pharaoh's army, his and all of the the, the means of war, his chariots, his captains, um, and and all you know everything. Elite chariots, captains, keep going out, and, and again and again you see his. It's it's this picture. It feels like we're getting ready to see a war, a big, the big battle at the end uh, of, you know, one of those Marvel movies or something like that. But here again, there's a repetition. It's Pharaoh, his chariots, his cavalry, all of his fighting men. And this kind of harkens back. We, we made mention of this several weeks back, but there was a repetition. Uh, if you go and kind of look back through chapter three through maybe five or six, but God describes Israel as with army language, as a military, a fighting force. And even though there's not an actual battle here, interestingly, it's almost like we've been primed to set up. We're, we're expecting some sort of climactic uh, war scene going on. Israel itself has been described, even though they're this motley group, crew of slaves, totally weak and defenseless, um, they're being described as a great army. Here we finally see Pharaoh's army. We were kind of primed. We, we should have expected that this would have been the climactic scene if we were tracing some of those images from before. Uh, so uh, again, yeah, all of Pharaoh's horse-drawn chariots, his cavalry, his army, they chased them, caught up with them, camped by the sea. Uh, here we see a, uh, another sad turn of affairs. The, the people who just saw the Israelites who just saw what? How many? Ten miraculous plagues sent from the Lord. They were set out. You know, if we see, saw in chapter 9 that it was very clear that the hail went uh, on Egypt, but not on Israel. The light came to Israel, but the darkness came to Egypt. They were rescued from the final devastating plague of the loss of the firstborn. And yet immediately they are losing faith because of their fear. They're terrified, they're crying out, um, and completely doubting and frustrated. Weren't there enough graves in Egypt? Did you just take us here to die? What have you done by bringing us out like this? We would have rather worked for the Egyptians. Let us work for the Egyptian. 
I, I feel like there is a, an interesting play on words here. This word work is the same word used in more of the, the priestly worship setting, to work or to serve. It's the same word that's used when God describes how Israel is going to serve him and worship him. So there's really this juxtaposition. The, the question is, do we want to work for Egypt or do we want to work for God? And we're, we've already seen examples of the kind of devastating, oppressive work that Pharaoh is placing on the backs of these slaves. And yet they're saying, well, we'd, we would have rather worked for the Egyptians than die in the desert. Uh, Moses comes back. This is a great you know, bumper sticker phrase. Don't be afraid. Stand your ground. Watch the Lord rescue you today. Moses now has a lot more faith than he did earlier. That's good to see. The, the people don't yet, but the, Moses does. The Egyptians you see today, you will never ever see again. The Lord will fight for you. You just keep still. I feel like there's a bit of, a bit of humor here, uh, especially here. You just keep still. And what's the very first thing God says? Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to get moving, <laughs> right? You just keep still. Watch the Lord fight for you today. Uh, and God says, uh, why are you standing around? get moving. Uh, and I love that. There's, there's some meditation to go on here. I think this is a true statement in, a, in one sense. Moses is saying, uh, yes, you were described as an army, but you're not going to fight. God is the one who's going to fight for you. You just keep still. You stand back and watch the Lord rescue you today. But the next level of that is, no, you're not actually going to just keep still. You do have something to do. God is rescuing you. It's clearly in God's hands. No one else can split the sea. No one else can let them walk on dry ground. No one else can defeat this great army in chariots and cavalry. So all of the main work, the heavy lifting is definitely God's, but they still have to take faith to walk through the sea uh, with the towers of water coming up on both sides. Uh, and so uh, maybe it's a bit of humor uh, and a, a bit of uh, maybe a picture of faith you hear either here as well. What is the, what does faith look like? And how do we connect keeping still and getting moving? And somehow our faith in God does both at the same time. You know, the image here in chapter 14 reminds me all the way forward to the end of the book of Revelation, where the saints of God are, they look like they're dressed for battle, and yet they don't pick up a sword at all. Uh, the battle is already won by Jesus by the conquering lamb. And in a similar way, these, these Israelites described as an army, yet they don't lift a finger. They just stand back and watch the Lord work. Uh, speaking of work, I, I also, that the, the challenge, maybe the reflection question for us is that um, the same word work is used to describe their work toward Egypt or the work toward God, but it's vastly different. Uh, so where are we tempted to work for the slave masters, for the, the ways of this world that are actually more oppressive and um, frustrating. And what is the way that God is saying, I want you to work for me. My burden is easy. My yoke is light. Uh, and what is the way that God wants to maybe redeem our understanding of work and service for him? <laughs>